It's the season finale of Turnaround Steering, and it's going to be a banger. Coming up, we're going to watch a video about the Passport Brothers wishing they had a woman from South America. I'll give you a theoretical thought at the end and a very special thanks at the end for season two. Join me for the season finale of Turnaround Steering, coming up next on YouTube. I guarantee you it's going to be a damn good finale. The modern women are fed up because the Passport Brothers are looking for love outside the U.S. Stay tuned for the season finale of Turnaround Steery right here on my YouTube channel because we're going to be watching a few videos on why these modern women from the Matrix don't seem to stand a chance when it comes to the Passport Brothers. Plus, I'll give you a theoretical thought at the end and a very special thanks. Fellas, as I often say, y'all should be knowing my saying and y'all should be knowing the drill. Why don't y'all grab a snack and come on back because y'all just might learn something. <laughs> Roll the intro. <laughs> what is up everybody? Once again, it's your boy, Mr. Turnaround, a.k.a. Tenacious T. And I want to welcome you to the season finale of Turnaround Theory right here on my YouTube channel. This is the platform where I normally give you guys a free theoretical thought on uh, just about anything. Hey, listen, if you are new to my channel on YouTube, I personally want to welcome you. And if you are, in fact, a returning subscriber, I want to welcome you back. As a constant daily reminder, please don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my official YouTube channel, it would help out and it would be beneficial for the YouTube algorithm and please don't forget to click on that post notification bell because you my friends will instantly be notified every single time your boy post up and upload more additional content onto the channel. Follow me on all social media sites, links are gonna be provided in the description box below. You can check out full episodes of Turnaround Theory on my official website, there's also going to be a link provided in the description box for that. Please don't forget to use the hashtag Team Turnaround that you see on your screen that lets me know personally that not only are you watching this episode of Turnaround Theory, but it just goes to show that you are supporting my channel in terms of the content that I post up and I might just send you a shout out right back. Don't forget to check out my latest music video entitled Game Over. There will be a YouTube link provided in the description box below. And if you also want to contribute to my YouTube channel through PayPal, there's also a link in the description box below. I hope I cover everything within this matter, but before we get started, y'all know the drill. Here's a quick word from our sponsor. Are you tired of those annoying scam calls and those robo-bully calls that constantly harass you over the phone day in and day out? I know how you feel. That's why I've downloaded the free hire app. It takes care of all of those scam calls and spam calls that you get on a daily basis. And it can also help identify numbers that you don't know about. And if you want to enhance that, you can also download the premium version of the hire app. Download the free hire app on Google Play and on the App Store. Hey, tell them Mr. Turnaround sent you. It's worth a try. Now back to the program. So on today's episode of Turnaround Theory, this is the season finale of the show. Now I want to invite you to stay tuned because at the end of today's broadcast, I'm going to give you a theoretical thought based on today's episode, but not only that, I'm going to also give a very special thanks at the end for season two. Now take a look at this video and shout out to More to Life for posting up this video on YouTube. I'll post up a YouTube link in the description box below as well. But check out this video. This is about a young woman who really can't keep a good man. In other words, the Passport Brothers are checking out when it comes to dealing with these modern women from the Matrix, while the Passport Brothers are looking for love outside the U.S. Stay tuned, watch this video, and I'll come back. 17 and a half years married, four kids. I begged this man, begged this man. Please, kid, I've never been out of the U.S. Can we please go out of the U.S.? No, no. I get a text from him five minutes ago. What does it say? Hey, I need your permission. It's in the planning, but me and Aaron, his fiance, are taking her kids and want to, he wants to take Kylie to Mexico. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. So 17 and a half years, he got with someone else, he went. Sounds like you didn't give him enough time. 
to prepare. Financial planning, right? Also sounds like the other person's pain. Assuming when they go low, I go lower. Eight and a half years. And now you're giving this woman everything that I begged you for. She has no one, so she's breaking down, I can tell, and crying. She had the same energy during the marriage. I'm sure of it. And who left who? Who left who? Did you leave him? I would love to know. You want to run that by me again? This is why guys love going out to South America, man. Whether it's any, anywhere over there. Whether it's Colombia, Bolivia, Brazil. For a woman like that. But this is the thing. To get a woman like that. That's not for play, right? That's not for pay. You can find them. Tons of them. All you have to do is venture off the beaten path. Because online, all you see is guys going to Colombia, going to the Dominican Republic, going on the beaten path, going to Brazil, still going on the beaten path, and following the same mistakes as others. If you do it just a little differently, right? Just add a little spice and everything nice in there. You'll find something like that and turn something like that into your everyday woman. It's possible. Straight facts. So this is the cousin that's been divorced, as y'all know. Oh, Lord have mercy. Look what this says. Your cousin just got a divorce after only being married for six months. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Look at her. What are they doing? We're going to celebrate her. This is me and my outfits. She's our bathroom. They're celebrating a divorce party. And yeah, let's, let's go celebrate your divorce, bitch. Let's go celebrate your divorce. POV your boy fell in love with a girl from the club. What? Bro is scared. <laughs> Bro, stop falling in love with the team. Look at him, she's gonna do it. Don't lip sir. If you if you lip sir, I'm gonna That's what happened to the past guy that went out with her friends and had to divorce after six months. He got with her. Just like that, and made that his boo thing like like that. Cause what? Where is those girls going? She belongs to the streets. Those three girls going. They usually you find them in the club, popping champagne, spending some other guy's money. Same thing happened to him. Guys, don't let that happen to you, please. But wait, there's more. Show mouth when you're talking to a man, because a lot of women do that, and then when they get snatched up. They're crying, and I'm not, I'm yeah. not saying that it's okay to hit a woman or no, anything. But not. stop acting like a man, right? But a lot of women want the authority of a man, mm. want the responsibility of a child, mm. and want the perks of being a woman. Damn, baby! Because if you come at a man like a man, what do you want him to do? Right. Because he would not even allow another man to come at him like that. Dolomite is my name and f***ing up motherfuckers is my game. Nine times out of ten, men don't come at other men like that because it would get violent. Right. But women, when you step into your masculine energy, what do you expect that man to do? Get into his feminine energy? Yeah. You want him, you, you, when have you ever had an argument or a spat or a situation with a man and he's like, okay, <laughs> after you became aggressive with him? Right. You all wouldn't care if a mm -hmm. man came to you feminine and said, okay. my dad wasn't in my life. My mom didn't teach me this. You say, bro, you 38 years old. I don't want to deal with a feminine man that hasn't addressed his mm -hmm. issues. So for me, dealing with a woman that way, I'm going to tell you the same thing. I understand you had issues or whatever no, growing okay. up and you had to be a certain <laughs> way, but I'm not going to put up with it as far as trying to be in a relationship with you because you don't know how to be a feminine woman. But wait, there's more. You see the girl at the end? I'm noticing that. Yeah, maybe she learned late, but he said the authority of a man, the responsibility of a child, and they don't have something else like a woman. Women are confused 
They don't want to take responsibility. They don't want to take any kind of credibility because, how can I say it? Men usually hold themselves accountable. Women need to start doing it as well. They do. Some do. I'm not going to say all women are bad back home, but most don't hold themselves accountable. So they do things like a six-month marriage, and then after they got hoochie mama dresses on and go to the club, and guys are doing the same thing, picking the wrong woman, like going out to a club and lips to the girl, as we just seen, right? This, this is proof of what's happening. This is proof in 3D right in front of your face. And the proof is in the pudding, if you know what I mean. This is the first time I'm putting my real life in it, like, as is no secret. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just not an answer. I have, I've been married for nine years and it's just, it just didn't work out. You know, it's like, again, like what I was saying, I don't have time for drama. I don't have time for nonsense. This is one of the most amazing times in my life. And if you can't celebrate that with me, I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to leave you behind. Like, right. I, I cannot. Right. I gotta you know what I'm here. saying? This is where we depart. Like, you wake up every day mad. There's literally nothing to be upset about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, we have, we have a beautiful child. We're good. Like, we, you know, we might owe some bills, and, but that's everybody has that. Everyone. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, everything is good. We, There's a few <laughs> things wrong on this side. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think also, too, like, I don't. I think it takes incredible strength to to realize like this. This was the love of my life at one point, mm -hmm. and he probably could be really good for me if he got it together. But I'm not willing to put my life and my passion and my mm -hmm. happiness. Can you dig it? I respect her. She tried. I give her that. She tried. A lot of women do. But who are they trying with? Did you see that guy? That guy doesn't look like the guy. Woman is all swapping on on date naps. You tried with the wrong one. He holds it together or you overlooked all of his faults because he was that guy. And I get it. You're a star. You're not going to get any, anything less. But still, accept something that fits you. It's true. Men always say it. Pick better. Just like I would tell that man that his friend would tell him too that was kissing a girl outside of the club. Pick better. Better. Just like I would tell that man, men need to pick better too. That chose the hoochie mama. He should have picked better. Same thing we tell women. Pick better. Don't you agree, Mr. Feather? Word. Because you're overlooking that guy that's your man. There's a guy in your Rolodex right now that's the one. Why would guys always say pick better? Because of that. The, the guy that's the one is in your Rolodex right now. You want to run that by me again? You overlooked them? You used them for a footy call? Or something else happened? That's why guys say pick better. Because a lot of you need to pick better. And some guys need to pick better too. And some guys need to a bigger brother over their shoulder. Or they need a hug from, from their father. They need something. But it's needed. Straight facts. So you want to know what you did wrong? Why are you still single when all of your friends met their person and got married in their 20s? I don't know nothing about that. First of all, being single in your 30s is one of the best things that could have ever happened to you. You didn't do anything wrong. Huh? You got lucky. Here's why. Once you're in your 30s, you know who you are. You are steadfast in who you are. And hopefully you've done enough healing that your bar is set so high that the only person that can meet that bar is your person. You're set in who you are. You're set in a career. You know your dreams, your aspirations, where you want your life to go. In your 20s, you just don't know that. Or for the most part, people don't know that. And you're still doing so much growing in your 20s. I can honestly tell you, as someone who got married in my 20s and then divorced, and then was in an abusive relationship, and then broke out of that, and then met my person at 33 years old, almost 34, I'm so glad that I met him in my 30s. Looking back, I didn't know anything about myself in my 20s. I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing, what I really wanted, what I wanted my life to look like. And in my 30s, I did. I knew exactly what I was looking for and I found it. You didn't do anything wrong. You're right exactly where you need to be. And the person that you're meant for, the person that's meant for you, 
is going to just cross your path when you least expect it, which I know sounds cliche and is really annoying to hear when you're still single, but I'm telling you, if you focus on yourself and you focus on your healing, they will come. Are you they sure will. About that? But the first step to that happening is you understanding that you didn't do anything wrong, that every single person is on their own journey. And like, I could have been one of those people that you looked at getting married in their twenties thinking, oh, she's so lucky. And I wasn't so lucky and I got divorced. And then that hurt and sadness left me in such a bad place that I immediately jumped into an abusive relationship. All of those things wouldn't have happened if I hadn't jumped into marriage so early. So you didn't do anything wrong. You're in the right spot. Man, I'm, I'm tired of hearing that. I'm tired of hearing women saying, I jumped into marriage early in my 20s. And you're divorced now. And you probably got the house. You're divorced with the house. I think you made the smartest mistake ever. That's your thinking. You're sitting there in your house and your coach on TikTok probably got a, a nice bag from the house you may have sold. I don't know what y'all had together. I can imagine though. 401k probably got half of that. All of the big homeowners or the big homeowners because of what's happened. It's sad, but it's what's happening nowadays. And then these women are coaching other women to do the same thing. Keep these guys churning. Keep it churning. Keep the cycle flowing. Get them, milk them, take it. Get them, milk them, take it. What? This is exactly why guys feel it's best to go out there. I get it, right? Especially if your man is doing the work. And I say every man out there needs to do the work. Definitely learn the language inside and out, right? Because it's not like going to the Philippines or some other places or Africa where they speak predominantly English, but especially in Africa, they speak it more. But it's not like that. You need to understand how to communicate with these women. They may not speak your language. So do the work with that. Also do the work with make sure you get yourself an online job or retirement. But still, a lot of you guys may not be retired if you're young. Get yourself an online job. Make it work. And then also, on top of that, set your budget in your head extremely low. Because that's why we're traveling. We're not just traveling for the woman. I got to say that. We're traveling to change our lives. And to change our lives with these women, right? What does changing your life entail to make you and her happy? Why? Because if you're with a woman, she's going to do all of that stuff for herself anyway. Can you dig it? And guys are trying to find women that want to do all of that stuff for themselves because they're not lazy, they're not bums. And more guys are trying to find women like that also that are sexy. Then feel they have to compete. And by any means, we will, because we realize it's definitely more to life to go into anything that's not that. Don't go away, because when I come right back, I'm going to give you guys a free theoretical thought to this episode and a very special thanks for the season two finale right after this. What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Turnaround, aka Tenacious T. I want to invite you to join me on Wednesday, November the 28th for a special Thanksgiving edition of Turnaround's Theory and on December the 25th for a special Christmas edition of Turnaround's Theory. Join me for those two dates only on YouTube. I promise you it's going to be a good one. There is a war against our girls. And that is the reason why women who got moral standards and integrity have to stick together. Anytime you got people who want to take a platform from somebody who actually out here trying to help young girls, yet they don't have no problem with platforms that encourage these young girls to sell their bodies, be prostitutes and hoes. Anytime your outrage is higher when it comes to somebody who gets online and tell young girls to prioritize marriage over having babies and being baby mamas, yet you don't have a problem with the women who go out here and tell your daughters to just sleep around with anybody. Be liberated. It don't matter whether or not he ain't got nothing to provide you or a child. 
Just use your body as liberation and sleep with whoever you want to and whatever happens, happens. You okay with those messages being pushed to your daughters, but it's a problem. You can pick apart the delivery. You can pick apart the tone when it comes to that, but you call each other bees and hoes in casual conversation and there's no issue there. These women will sit up on this app and they'll send money, they'll support, they'll follow women who promote DV, women who known to abuse their children, women who neglect their kids and harm their children, women who are known for doing these things, they'll give those women full support. But a woman who is out here actually trying to help the girls, that's who you got a problem with. That's the one who don't need to have a platform. That's the one who you want to silence. There is a war against these young girls. They do not want to see these young girls succeed. What they want is they want them to ruin their lives the same way that they ruin theirs. They do not want to see these young girls make better decisions than they made because it makes them question their whole life. It makes them question everything that they did in it wrong, and it makes them wish that they could go back and do it again. Therefore, if you can't beat them, join them. That's the mindset, and they want these young girls to join them in the misery that they created for their own lives. They don't want to see these girls be better. I thank God for young girls like Clark on this app where these young black girls especially get to see what using up what up here where it can get you and that you don't have to spread your legs and manipulate men and sell your body to men to live a luxury lifestyle. You can use what God gave you to get all of those things on your own. And then if you find a man along the way who can meet you where you at, fine. But you continue to use what you got to get what you want in the right positive ways. And now, turn around, steal radical thought. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for another edition of Turnaround Theoretical Folk with yours truly. I'm about to give you guys a free theoretical thought based on today's episode about the Passport Brothers going to South America to find love elsewhere. Here's your theoretical thought for the day to close out season two. Fellas, if you plan on going to find love outside another country, beware of the tactics that modern women may deal with there. Because there are some modern women that have come to the same countries that you've been promoted to go to to try to find some type of shenanigan, as always, and then they want to try to conjure up an excuse to play victim. Once again, fellas, you're entitled to find love. But if you can't find love in the U.S., you can find it elsewhere, such as the Dominican Republic, the Philippines, and beyond. But do be careful, because other countries do not tolerate foolishness. With that being said... That is your theoretical thought for the day. And this concludes the second season of Turnaround Theory right here on my YouTube channel. I hope that each and every one of you have enjoyed the entire second season of Turnaround Theory on my YouTube channel. I hope you all have learned something from each and every episode of the past two seasons. And as always, let me know what you think in the comment section below concerning today's episode. And as a constant daily reminder, I want to inform you to please don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my official youtube channel it would help out and it would be beneficial for the youtube algorithm and don't forget to click on that post notification bell because you my friends will instantly be notified every single time your boy posts up and upload more additional content onto the channel i'm very happy to announce that i will be hosting the third season of turnaround theory that will be premiering on monday january the 6th on my YouTube channel, and I'm also happy to announce that the entire third season of Turnaround Theory will also be featured on my Facebook fan page. I'm happy and I'm excited to host another season coming up for January. Until then, I'm your boy Mr. Turnaround, aka Tenacious T, signing off. And as always, as I say, Team Turnaround out. <laughs>